We'll begin with some opening remarks from Coach, and then we'll take questions for both Coach and the student athletes. Coach, all yours. First, uh, first off, I, I'm honored and uh, grateful to be up here uh, representing Texas State University. Uh, you know, at these media days, I, I do believe that our our university is on the rise. You know, we have new leadership right now with uh, our new president, Mr. President uh, Kelly Danfis. Um, and then our new athletic director, uh, Don Coriel, who has been working tirelessly and effortlessly to help support us in any possible way we possibly can. So all those guys, a lot of, you know, they do a lot for us. And it just shows that our university is trending in the right direction. And I'm also very honored and grateful to be up here to represent the Sun Belt. Uh, the Sun Belt uh, and what Commissioner Gill has done, it just shows that the structure and su- the stability and support of what this uh, conference is all about, it just shows that this this conference is in a really good spot, and it's probably the, gra- the greatest group of five conference right now um, out there in college football just by the support and stability of what Commissioner Gill has done. But uh, today we got an opportunity to meet two of our players, the face of our program, uh, Kyle Ergel and Jordan Revels, uh, two unique stories, unique backgrounds, and it's an opportunity for them to share their story and, and be around you guys and talk about how great Texas State is and and uh, these guys are the epitome of what we're trying to do and what we're trying to change here at Texas State. And uh, you got Kyle Ergel, who comes from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, who uh, has been on a lot of watch lists early, you know, just for offensive line play. He's been a starter for us at the right guard position. Uh, he brings an extreme work ethic, uh, a toughness about him, and something that I lean on him a lot on trying to change the narrative of our program on who we are. And uh, Kyle has been a great ambassador for our program. And we've got Jordan Revels, uh, who has been with me since day one. Uh, it's back in 2019. He brought in, he came in as a defensive end. Uh, he's now, he's a very multiple player. He's playing outside linebacker. He was number 91 last year. He's number eight now. Uh, he's getting to that single digit. He believes he can play DB. And now he's asking for a, a tight end package as well, just because of how multiple he is. But these guys got great, unique stories. Uh, and uh, I'm fired up for you guys to actually like get to ask them questions and let them say their their story and about how great Texas State is. But looking forward to this season, uh, I do believe that this is uh, a team with a, a lot of depth. You know, I was looking through kind of our, our numbers. We've had around 80 guys that have played in college football games, and and a lot has to do with you know the COVID eligibility freeze and and some unfortunate injuries that some of these guys had. But we have a very ex- experienced team right now. And uh, there's a lot of excitement around our program. And I think there's a lot of excitement for every school that gets up here about this time of the year. But, you know, this is the first time where we feel that we have a good amount of depth and then we're in a decent spot, you know, as a football program. But we know we're not playing up to the standards and the expectations that we have set as a program. Uh, but these guys are working tirelessly and effortlessly to, to put a product out there that people are going to be proud of. And our expectations is to go to a bowl game for the first time in school history. We've only been uh, in FBS football. This is the 10th year of FBS football for our program. Uh, never been to a bowl game. I think that would be a great deal for our university to galvanize our university and, uh, and create even more excitement. But, you know, looking forward to this season. And uh, I think there's a lot of great things to come for Texas State in the future. So thank you. Questions? We'll now take questions for Coach Spavital and the student-athletes. For those of you here in the room, if you have a question, again, we'd ask you to please raise your hand and wait for a microphone to come to you. And when you do uh, ask, we'd ask you to please stand up so we can catch you on camera. Uh, please state your name and your media affiliation before you ask your question. And for those of you listening on Zoom, please type your questions into the chat, and I will read those out loud. So first, any questions from here in the room? Kevin Foote, a KDN Advocate. Coach, what are the th- things, obviously you have all the depth issues that you just spoke, but in terms of on the field that y'all got to do better at to close games that you weren't able to do in, in recent years? Yeah, that's, that's been kind of the thing that we've addressed, you know, in the offseason. You know, you look at where we, were, we, where we are as a program. You know, I, I think that when I got here in 2019, I think we've changed the culture. I think we have established that we are going to show up and we're going to play hard and we're going to fight for everything that we do. But And I, I believe that the buy-in is tremendous right now with our kids. You know, our, our next phase is that we have to have action. We have to show it on the field. And, and you look at, you know, the, the, the ins and outs of how we've lost games over the years. And a lot of it comes down to self-imposed, you know, penalties or just turnovers and, and uh, the efficiency of what we're doing offensively. And, uh, and that's something that we put a, a big emphasis on is trying to be more efficient offensively. 
All right, like uh, we've been putting the defense in a lot of you know bad situations at times, but for us, we we got to be able to not turn the ball over. We got to be able to play smarter football and not beat ourselves, and and that's something that um, we look at. You know, on a daily basis, I, I can get into the details of it. I think our third down percentage is very bad. We got to learn how to get off the field in third downs. Uh, you know, we've got to be able to score touchdowns. Our red zone scoring percentage is not where we need to be. Uh, and if you really just focus on those two type deals of staying on the field and getting off the field, increase our third down percentage. But at the same time, I right, score touchdowns because kicking field goals is not going to win us games right now. And and that's kind of been our emphasis in the talks that we've had with our team in the offseason. Colin Jordan, the same thing about closing out games. Um, I think it just starts with the off-season preparation. You know, it started in spring ball. I think we ramped it up in spring ball. You know, just being able to compete with uh, my defense and the team the entire time, and now it just carries on into fall camp. And I think we've we've had multiple conversations about it. You know, we just got to ramp it up even another level. I think we have so much more we can tap into as a group and uh, as a team. I, I just think that uh, it's going to help us, and we're going to finish these games, these close games in the fourth quarter. Yeah, like he said, I just feel like in the past we've mentally broke ourselves down and we just focus on our missiles and at the end of the games, it's really come down to a lot of mental lock-in and just limits in your errors. And I feel like throughout the offseason, all this 21, everything, a lot of team, we just really focus on our mental and it's become stronger. And that's our strongest point. Hi, Coach. Um, Chris Back here, Coach, uh, Chris Hudgison over at KIT in Arkansas. You've got a whole, lot of Arkansas State connections on the team this year. Just what are your thoughts on you know, Lane Hatcher, Lincoln Perry, and R.J. Fleming on your staff now for this year, too? Oh, man, you haven't, haven't heard about R.J. in a while. But, uh, yeah, no, um, you know, the transfer portal is always such an interesting topic. You know, um, if I would have told you before the 2020 season that, you know, our starting quarterback would be at App State and we would have one of the quarterbacks at Arkansas State, I'd, I'd figure out what world, world are we living in right now, you know. Uh, but, you know, they hit the transfer portal and, and Lane Hatcher and, and Lincoln Perry have brought an unbelievable work ethic. Uh, you know, I think it's very difficult for kids to transfer in and just, you know, they, they have a lot to deal with. They have to fill out a new scenario and situation that they're currently in. And, and those two have handled themselves uh, with great poise and uh, with great character, too. Um, very cordial of the people in front of them. They know they're here, here to help the team. And uh, those two have done a great job and, and w uh, just with the, with the culture as well of our team. Uh, you know, R.J. Fleming has done a really good job for us. Um, just got in here, you know, really kind of in February, March of this of this year. Um, been around RJ for a long time, and and he's done a lot of great things. He's a guy that's uh, he's very passionate about his players. He dives into them as people, uh, very cares about them tremendously. Great recruiter, great coach, just you know, great husband, great father, great teacher. Yeah, I can't speak you know highly enough about RJ, but uh, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting you have those three guys coming in, and then our new president came from Arkansas State as well. Uh, Ms. President Danfis and just what he brings to the table with the energy and and uh, how he's a servant leader. You never hear our new president talk about me or I. He always talks about we and us, and, and uh, his energy is unbelievable. His Twitter game's unbelievable, too, if you guys ever follow uh, our president. But, uh, you know, just really, really thankful to have these four guys a part of Texas State. Coach Emmanuel Peppas, uh, Sunbelt Conference. Uh, just wanted to get you to talk about the, the running back room in that position. Uh, you returned a good bit back from last year. Just uh, your overall thoughts going into this season on, on kind of that position and the depth you look at there. Yeah, so you, you look at that room. Uh, I think we got five running backs that can contribute next year. You know, you've got, you know, Calvin Hill and Jamil Jeter. Those two guys have been a staple of our program the past couple of years. And uh, uh, they're, they're very comfortable in what they're doing. They're bought in with what everything is going on. Uh, and and they're very, they have a very great awareness of, of how the offense works. So, you know, those guys have been a staple already. You bring in Lincoln Perry from Arkansas State, who's, uh, you know, he's a, he's a proven kid already. You know, everybody has seen him play in this league, and, and he's already made an impact on our program. And then you bring in guys like Josh Berry uh, and, and Demarius, Demarius Good. Uh, those two guys are very unique, talented kids now, you know, and you've got to find ways to get them touches. You know, like you have five running backs that I believe that can play. Uh, the issue is going to be how do you, you know, keep them you know, involved in the game plan because it's tough to play five running backs. So we're going to have little things to utilize all these guys. But, you know, as coaches, we got to find a way to utilize all five of these guys in games. Got a Zoom question from Justin Zimmer of WMUL. Coach, if you would talk about the division, 
Compared to the East, there's one clear favorite in the West. So what's your message to your guys about capitalizing on the competition in the West? Yeah, like the, I think the competition in the West is is very strong as well. You know, I, th I think the the Sun Belt uh, is a very fun league to be a part of. You know, I, I've always tell our kids like if we're up 21 or down 21, it's always going to come down to a one possession game, and and that's kind of how our approach is. You know, what we got to worry about is just uh, you know ourselves. We got a lot of work to do. We got to keep getting better as as a team and 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 worrying about the little things and being a, a smarter football team. But when it gets down to the competition, I think, you know, you're going to look back at the end of the year, and I think the, the divisions and the rankings are going to be completely different than what people expected because you've added four new teams into this conference that uh, I think there's going to be a lot of great variety, a lot of great rivalries. I think there's going to be a lot of great competition this year. Mitchell Gladstone, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Kyle, I know you came from Canada and were recruited out of Canada. I'm curious what that experience was like for you a couple years back and how you think guys coming from Canada looking to play football in the States can, you know, get more attention. Um, obviously, there are lots of guys all over the place. I'm just curious what your thoughts on are, you know, getting notice from, from Canada to the States. You know, I think it, uh, it it's starting to open up a little bit more, you know, north of the border. Uh, you know, it's an honor to be up here and represent my country along with Texas State, but I think that... Uh, a lot of it has to do with the success that the guys previous have had, right? You talk about names like Neville Gallimore, Chase Claypool, Javon Holland. These are all Canadians that play in the NFL now and kind of opened up these doors for the next generation that is following, right? And I just hope to be one of those guys. I, uh, I always go back and I try giving back to the community that gave me so much and gave me my opportunity to, you know, move to the state side of things and play football at the highest level. Uh, I think that... There's ballers up in Canada, right? And it just takes the right staff and it takes the right amount of people to understand that, you know, we can play ball and we can help a team win some really big ball games. And uh, I think that it, just me continuing to doing what I'm doing, right, doing, doing well, playing well, is going to help these Canadian kids in the recruitment process for sure. have a Zoom question for Jordan. Jordan, Coach mentioned getting off the field on third down. What do you as a defense have to do to make that a reality? Um, we really just got to harness in on our third down um, games and, and all that such sort. But we just we realized that we didn't have so much success last year as we wanted, and we just going to work, everybody individually, just working on what they can do better on third down and really just perfecting our craft. I also have a Zoom question for Kyle. This is from Drew King of the San Marcos Daily Record. Kyle, what's been the biggest difference with the team now compared to when you first came to San Marcos a year ago? Uh, it's our mentality, right? We've adopted the blue-collar mentality. We talk about it all the time with the team. We're just a bunch of guys that came together. We're not big recruits. We're just dudes that show up every day, and they're going to scrap, and we're going to claw, and we're going to have that grit and determination. I think we've all bought into that. We've, uh, you know, it starts with, you know, Jordan and I up here but it, on the field, but it started with Coach Spav, right? He talks about it all the time, just – being those blue collar fighters, you bring your hard hat and your lunch pail to work every day and you're going to get after it. And I think that's going to show this season and we're really excited for it. Any other questions from the floor? Oh, oh we have one more Zoom question. Uh, also from uh, Drew King of San Marcos, both for Coach and Kyle. How much has the continuity on the offensive line helped the unit? And how have the newcomers fit in so far? Yeah, the, just the continuity. Like, this is the first time where I think we have over 10 guys that have really started college football games for us um, up front, which uh, it, the depth is there, and you can move guys around as much as you possibly can. But uh, I think that's one of the hardest positions to get, you know, to coach. And I think it's one of the hardest positions to get them all to play together. And, uh, you know, because they got to think as one and play as one and step as one. And um, I think your continuity is the most important thing up front. And when you got guys that have a lot of college experience, a lot of starts for us right now, uh, you know, they're very familiar with each other. And, uh, you know, I, I just think with the offensive line, the more reps you do, you know, the better off you're going to be. And these guys got a lot of reps together. Yeah, you know, just to build off that, from left to right, you got Dalton Cooper, you got Evan Lavelle, Alex Castilla, Russell Baker, myself, Richard West. These guys are these guys are dogs, right? We we played so many snaps together. We returned four of the five starters. The only one we lost was Liam Dobson, but uh, 
it's been awesome, you know. We, we do everything together. We're such a tight-knit group. I like to say we're some of the tightest on the team. You know, we get out, we get dinner together, we hang out outside of football. It's just, you know, it's awesome when you have such a tight group because you play so much better and you want to play so much harder for the guy next to you. And it's, uh, it's a brotherhood for sure. And I think this is going to be a really good offensive line and we have a chance to do something really special this year. I have another Zoom question for Coach. How is the quarterback competition shaping up so far? Yeah, that's been a like what I said earlier. Like, if you would have ever thought, like, you know, our starting quarterback is at a different school, and we we got another quarterback from another school, uh, that just kind of shows you where it is. We haven't had a guy that has started a game for us, but the quarterback competition is is really good right now. You got Lane Hatcher, and you got Ty Evans, and you got C.J. Rogers in the mix right now. Uh, those three guys have done a great job already. We brought in C.J. Rogers from Baylor late because. Uh, I didn't want to roll the dice going into the, into the season with only two quarterbacks. So you bring him in for depth purposes, but he's actually here to compete. And uh, I, I just think with how you have limited amounts of reps in fall camp this year, uh, which uh, in the and the tackling back to back, we have to amp that competition up as as crazy as we possibly can early, uh, and put them in situations because you know you when you develop quarterbacks and when you compare quarterbacks, it's unfair to to give one guy. You know more, you know success, especially if he's got the one O line and the other one's got the two O line. Uh, I, I judge off of where their eyes are and and how they're making their decisions, and then we got up to coaches. We got to put them in situations to make sure that they're competing and uh, and seeing who's going to take the team down and score. So that quarterback competition is going to be pretty interesting throughout fall camp. Any other questions in the room, Coach? Kyle, Jordan, we appreciate you being here. Good luck going forward this season. We pre- oh, oh, got one more. Sorry. It's all good. Uh, Jake, Corey Diaz with the Daily Advertiser in Lafayette. Uh, question for you is NIL and its effect that it's had on high school recruiting. For, for you guys at the G5 level, how much of a concern, collective concern is it that you sign a high school player, he's with you guys for a year or two, you basically do the development of him as a college football player, and then he bolts because a larger school with potentially a deeper NIL fund can sign him and, and have him transfer. And I was almost free getting away with no NIL questions there for a minute. But, um, you know, like, that's, the, that's the times we're living in. You know, and I, I feel like you either adapt or you die. And, and you can complain about it. Um, we, we have had a lot of guys. We've had guys that were high school kids that we lost due to, you know, other deals, name image likeness deals or, you know. But I'm never going to knock a kid if he wants to further himself or have an opportunity to go somewhere else. But as a roster management standpoint, it gets very difficult in group of five because you've got to prepare for potential kids possibly leaving. You've got to recruit your current players. And at the same time, you know, with them getting rid of the 25 initial counter, that at least allows us to kind of buffer the numbers to make sure we have depth going into fall camp. But uh, that, that's going to be a hot topic for, for years to come. Um, you know, I, I think in group, and five, group of five where we're at, we're in a kind of in a gray area of, you know, we also need facility upgrades and we also, you know, there's also guys, you know, wanting to do the name image likeness collectives and all that stuff. But, you know, we, we really don't have much of that issues at Texas State. You know, like right now we just got to take it one day at a time, understand that you could potentially lose a guy or not, and then you just adjust accordingly and go find the guys that are going to put, uh, that you put on your team that are going to help us win games. Coach, Kyle, Jordan, we appreciate it. Good luck to you this season. Thanks for being here. We will continue here in this room in about five minutes from now at 11.30 a.m. with the Arkansas State Red Wolves.